that's what the, the dashboard is all about. It's about how do I read the options market to glean information that can give me signals and insight as to what the smart players in the options market are doing. Okay. So the first port of call always on our weekly product is this, this summary table where we've got spot, implied vol, realized vol, and skew. And we kind of track all these things every single week, see what's going on, see if it's telling us anything. We get a gauge for like how much spot's been moving in context of the volatility. We get a gauge for where implied volatility is in its ranges. So we've got this IV rank here telling us where the stuff is. You can see Nikkei vols pumped, whereas US indices are super cheap. Uh, we've got uranium vol pumped, mid-range oil and nat gas. Uh, other commodities like copper, super cheap. So you can very quickly just see from the depth of these bars where the expensive and cheap vols are. We've got term structure here. Obviously, we you know you know what that is after the intermediate course. But the idea with the term structure is to see if the curve's in contango or backwardation. So if this is a positive number, we're in contango. If it's a negative number, we're in backwardation. What does backwardation tell us? It tells us the market's in a stressed out state. It means the market is expecting quite a lot of volatility. And then in the future, it's going to settle down. Whereas if it's in contango, it's saying we're not moving right now, but we're going to charge you a term premium for the future because there might be some movement in the future that we don't know what's going to spark that, basically. So those are the different states of the curve. And that, those states of the curve, plus what we call carry, uh, which is the difference between realized and implied vol, those, those two things we combine to then decide whether we want to be long or short gamma. Um, generally, I'm not long gamma very often as a retail trader. I'll leave that to the dealers who keep getting hit in options but, and trading it actively. For me, often I'm looking for ways to sell gamma to earn income. So I tend to do, those of you who subscribe to me will know, I tend to do iron condors to earn a bit of income every now and again. Um, and, you know, in selecting what I'm going to sell for um, the iron condors to earn income, I'm going to be looking at some of these carry metrics, right? So I'm going to be seeing, you know, that copper and precious metals right now are quite positive in terms of carry. So the implied relative to realize is quite good. Uh, it's not so good in the US indices right now. So maybe I'll shy away from doing it there. Um, where else? In some of these FX rates, it's not bad. Um, some of these sectors as well, not bad as well. So these help me quickly sort of draw my eyes to where there's decent positive carry, where I may want to consider selling iron condors if I do want to lean that way. And I think the market remains range bound in the status quo. How can I extract some income from that? So that's what the carry part is trying to tell me. There are some other factors as well about carry, like we have expiry risk. If we think the market's going to get pinned into expiry, this can also drive that decision. I do that quite often as well. I, I sell uh, iron condors the week before expiry because I think expiry is going to kind of hold the market. Uh, and so I try and lean on that fact based on a few think gauges that I have, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, and then we've got the skew that we mentioned before, changes daily, weekly, and skew, percentiles. And, and really, the information is skew. I'd say there's two main things that we look for in skew. One is where we have skew diverging from spot price action. Okay. So if you were seeing things like um, spot was trading one way, but the skew was basically going, spot was going down, but the skew was getting bid for calls, basically, right? That would, that would tell you that there was a divergence in the market, that some players in the market, despite spot going down, are hoovering up the upside because they think the tail risk on the upside is greater. Now, this is something we saw very recently, in, late last year in NatGas. So we saw NatGas just selling off, selling off, selling off into year end aggressively, just couldn't find a bounce. And yet the, the SKU was trading call premium, steep call premium. Okay. And it was actually going even steeper in call premium whilst the spot was going down. So that divergence was basically the market saying, yes, spot's down right now, but we think it could reverse violently. We think the tail risk is still, still to the upside. And then what happened? We got a 17% rally in a week. I think we got a 10% rally the week before. We got about 30% rally off the bottom in short order, right? So the skew, there was intelligence in the skew. It was telling us where the tail risk was if we wanted to listen to it right? So this is why we monitor this stuff, because we need to know what the smart players in the market are thinking and doing. So it gives us a bit of a warning signal, okay? So that's one potential kind of, let's call it exhaustion signal you can get when the skew diverges from spot. I also think skew works the other way around as well, when you actually get a move down in spot, 
Markets crashing or might maybe it's spiking in commodities, whatever it is. It's a big move either way. And the skew goes with it and it goes to extremes, right? So when the skew and the vol and the spot have all gone down, well, the spot's gone down, let's say, for equities and the, and the vol has exploded and the put skews exploded, then it reaches like a crescendo moment. It reaches like a peak panic moment where it's very unlikely that you're not going to have some sort of bounce from these levels because the vol's trading near the top of the range, the skew's trading near the top of the range. There's no one left to buy it. There's no one left to panic, basically. All the panicking has been done. This is why we track the range of where the skew trades and where it lives, because if it's in the 80th, 90th percentile, it hardly ever stays there for very long. It tends to be that is your peak panic signal, and that is time to step in and fade whatever direction the market has moved because it's peak panic. So, so it's interesting because the, 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 the divergence is a bit of a slower moving lead indicator, but the, the kind of peak panic where it's not divergent, but it's going with the market, but it's just going to extremes. That is kind of like within the next day or two, this thing is going to respond because it's got oversold. So it's like an oversold indicator versus like a exhaustion indicator. They're not the same, right? They kind of have different dynamics. They have different drivers. The fear and greed are a bit different there um, because the, the bounce from oversold may not be a major inflection point. It might just be that we're overdone. We have a dead cat bounce and then we continue trending lower. But we did hit peak panic, basically. Right. So the, these are the things that monitoring these things allows you to do.